Welcome everyone. Today we are in the Tricycle Cafe and Bike Shop with our guy Mike. Mike. Welcome Mike. Cycle Michael. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. No doubt. No doubt. And everybody, I'm Chris, aka Tron Rides on IG. Mike. Cycle Michael underscore 267. I don't think I'm following you. Cycle Michael? Yeah, for, shop, you. for sure. For oh. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna follow you. I'm sorry. Yo, it's so disappointing when like you meet people and be like, yeah, I'll follow you on IG, and then they look you up and it's like following. Yeah, you're and like, like you're like, I'm not. You gotta not hit him with the the follow back button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Like, oh, he's been following me clearly. <laughs> I don't rats. know. Yeah. I think I follow all of y'all. Yeah. I'm almost Maybe. sure. Maybe we gonna we gonna make sure. We're we gonna see. make sure. All right. But you're clearly not following no IG. Yeah, out, so we're not I mean, following as long as you following. Guy. Black Watch Black Cycling. Watch cycling. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're good. Y'all can follow me. I'm Chad Bennett, C H A D B E E N I T. Yeah. And, and definitely it. follow the Black Watch Cycling page on IG. That's me. You know yeah, I mean? that's, yeah, that's our. That's our. Like, I'm claiming that's that one. <laughs> that's our. For real. So, Mike, thanks for having us here today. Um, we really appreciate it. Your shop has been a cool community center. Like, I was speaking to some of the writers that are around. And I remember, and she's going to be on with us a little later, but she kind of mentioned to me that, you know, like you stepped in, she needed some assistance with one of her group outings or something like that. And it's, she was really impressing upon me, like how much the shop is just a big part of the community, not just cycling, but just in general. So take us back to the beginning. Like what made you decide to want to actually have a cafe and bike shop? Nobody should ever start a bike shop. I'll say that. Like, it's a horrible <laughs> it's like, investment. No, it, it, it's not. It's not. The thing that made me, um, I got to give you a, a story as a precursor. Let's, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Let's hear it. So as a black cyclist, um, I haven't always been a cyclist. I went on a date with this young lady. She had this like little hybrid track. I had this Walmart bike, right? It was a Genesis. So I was just like, and she was cute, right? She was cute. She was cute and he had the Genesis. So you yeah, already know yeah, where this going. That's yeah. like homie had on the Pro Kids. So, this story is so good So I was already. like, yo, you want to go on a date? She was like, yeah. So I was like, let's let's take this bike ride. She was like, what? I was like, yeah, I saw you have a bike. You know what I'm saying? We should go to this bike ride. That's original. I like it. I've been an athlete okay. for like most of my life. I was in the military. You know what I'm saying? I did really well at, you know, all the athletic things in the military, mm -hmm. like your PT test, all that stuff. Yep. So I was just like, I can ride a bike. Yo, we got on them bikes, and Shorty was kicking it. <laughs> like, not even arrow. When I tell you she's riding, like, straight up, just like. She dusted you, son? Smoking. Yeah. She I, ain't gonna say, I ain't going to say she dusted me. <laughs> straight spy hunter with the Yo, smoke coming out the back. But she almost dropped me. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Like, she almost dropped me. <laughs> I was just like, sounds on his Yeah, and I'm just sitting there oh, kicking. Man. I'm like, yo, why? Why is she going so fast? And why I'm going so slow? Didn't understand it, right? So then I, I had moved to Philly and I lived three, it was like three miles from my job. Mm -hmm. It was this old head there and he used to ride his bike everywhere. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna talk to the old head. So I was like, he's like, man, where do you live? So I told him where I lived. I lived in Germantown. My job was in Alney. So he was just like, yo, ride your bike to work, young blood. So I was just like, yeah. all right, Hit then. you with the young blood. Yeah. Like, Life like a 1970s yeah. movie, like a right. black exploitation joint with the stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great money, man. His name was, his name was Henry, too. Oh, I love Henry this story. Like, Henry, just, he was just the OG. Wait, okay, what was his fro? Was it like a little teeny weeny joint? Or was yep. it a little bit more? It was, it was picked like, out. It was it was like picked the, out. It was picked out? Yep. Oh, yo, See? Henry was fresh. And he had like a beard. <laughs> Henry just had like fresh. a real close goatee. Word. And that was it. And he I was, was killing like, you with oh, the throw in the clothes go to. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Like, not light skin, but dark skin, light skin. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Light skin, but dark skin, light skin. <laughs> yeah. We will come back to what that means later. <laughs> so, so Henry was like, ride your bike to work, young blood. So I was like, all right, bet. So I was like, yo, I'm going to start riding my bike to work. I get on this Genesis. I ain't know, like, if you drive through Philly, you don't know that there's so many hills. You almost died the first time I rode to work. I was just sitting there. I come in, I'm sweating, like out of breath. He like, what's wrong with you? I was like, bro, I rode my bike to work, like with the deer eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like in right, shock. Right. Heart rate was probably right, 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 I was like, right. rode my bike to work. Zone five heart rate. Right. <laughs> so then he's like, let me see what you're working with. So I showed him what I was working with. He was like, 
Oh man, that's how it starts. Wow. Yeah. That's how it starts. He wow. put me on. He put me on. He was like, first of all, that's a mountain bike. Second of all, that shit little as hell. Oh, <laughs> wow. Can I cuss? Yes, you can. You can. can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, second of all, that shit little as hell. And it's heavy. And where do you see mountains out here? So I was just like, damn, yo, you right. You had the flat like, pedals and all that, right? Flat pedals. I don't even think. There was like yo, the did you have a bell, bro? pedals. <laughs> bro, yo, that's not like a bike that has a bell. Did you why, have a bell on it? Nah. Why is it every time we decide to get though. a bike? They have reflectors. It's always a mountain bike. Do you the notice that? One, yeah. Yes. Because they look cool. It's something about mountain bikes that. But I think it's also because that's what we see in Walmart. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're not going to a bike store, they only have mountain bikes. I mean, I, if they're actually mountain bikes, I don't even know really what to call them. But you think about, like, the culture, too. So the culture is just now coming around to, like, dudes in tights looking yeah. cool. You know what I mean? I think we make it look really good. Bruh, say it. Black men in Lycra look sexy. Say it. <laughs> do, yo. Say it. Black men proud. in Lycra it's like, hey. look sexy. Yes. That's but we why got, you we wore put yours our little, today. That's why I have mine today. Yeah. I have on mine today. We're, we're going to talk about why I have on mine I today. I need one of those, too. Especially when our, our oh, next yeah. crew yeah. come yeah. in. But this is actually designed by Chad. So we did that episode where we were talking about kits. So this is one of the kits that Chad designed. We call mm. it Kodak White. It's actually really, really fresh. Kodak yeah. Fresh White. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. I don't yeah, we'll talk about that. Very fly. But, you know, if we put our little splash on, on things, they pop. Of course. On yes. everything. Absolutely. Everything. Absolutely. We just inject a little bit of culture. Yep. And it's there. So I think that historically, road bikes aren't that cool, right? And if you go to the store, you see a mountain bike. Mountain bikes look cooler. They got the little dual shocks on them. Yeah. The big tires. Do you think the road bike thing not being cool is because it's technical with shifting gears? Nah, because you got to shift gears in Yes, bike. but it's like a little thumb joint. I attribute it to the skinny bikes. tires. Mountain bikes look like SUVs. Yes. Mm, yeah. And road yeah. bikes just look like toys. Great analogy. Great yeah. analogy. Great but analogy. then when you get on some, like, one of the first bikes that I that I built myself, I wanted it to look like a 6'4 um, like Impala. It's downstairs. The one in the middle. Where? Um, in the window. Okay. So I did it. I stripped it down, did a candy apple red, nice. did the gumball uh, nice. tires on it, nice. and some polished um, aluminum wheels, like the deep dish aluminum wheels. Right. But that joint came out. Like when it came out, I was looking at it, I was like, damn, yo, that shit is nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like me and Iron Mike built it in here before any of this stuff was done. Like we just sat up in here one night and started building it. And it just came out so fresh. I was just like, yo, we need more of these. Like we need to have these type of bikes. The, the one brand, which I won't mention, does a good job of making custom frames and bikes. Because y'all be looking fly with y'all bikes a lot of times. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Specialized Thank you. does a good job, too. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were saying that. It's also, okay. It's okay. We're Mike equal said, opportunity. Also, Mike, Mike said I won't mention, then says special. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Also, if you like a custom bike built by Brown, we'll build you something very custom. <laughs> Go ahead. There get your plug get, in, Get man. your plug that's my, in. That's my shameless yeah. plug. You didn't, you didn't tell us where you were located. Concho Hawken, PA. Concho Hawken, PA. So it's 19428. One Station Avenue? One Station One Station Road? Avenue. One Station yeah. Avenue. How Concho far is Hawken, it from Philly? PA. Six miles. West. Yeah. It's faster to get here on your bike sometimes than in your car. Lies. Because no, actually that's a fact. Uh, Yo, rush hour. We're gonna talk about it. Rush hour. It's a fact. It takes it takes fifty minutes to get here in a car. Yes. Rush hour. That's a fact. From West Philly to here. That's a fact. I googled downtown Philadelphia. It said forty-seven minutes. Yeah. Why? Why? And don't let me get on an e-bike, dog, bro. (laughs) Let me get my. I'm telling you, I just rode it, but go ahead. Yo, I'm telling you, y'all rode the hilly route, bro. Y'all, y'all <laughs> straight up took detours. It's, like, it's a straight shot. Yo, real quick, I did X Games coming here. Me and me and I, my guy Gray Rizzy, we got off at 30th Street Station. We we're like, oh, this is a nice path when you come out, right? The road is like extra nice. It's like four lanes almost like it'd be a, some, yeah and it's like really cool no no it's nice then you come up to that bridge the one bridge yeah this looks really really nice mm-hmm. right then you get on the road and we're riding and we met up with another guy uh lee lee show lee show and he was taking us here 
And he was like, man, y'all don't really want to take the trail. The trail is more direct, but you don't want to take the trail because yeah. it's trash, because it's muddy. So Lee proceeds to take us to a gravel quarry where we have Mack trucks. We come out of that, and then oh. the dude is like, yeah, you can get back to the street by going up those stairs. When you think somebody says stairs and you have a bike, what are you thinking? Six, maybe 10 stairs, 15 no, stairs no, maybe? No. Bro, we did eight flights of stairs. <laughs> Oh yeah, you did some gravel shit. <laughs> we did some, yo, then after that, we got back onto the uh, trail. That joint was just like super muddy, mm-hmm. but it was quick though. It was quick. It was only yeah. twelve miles. It y'all was only did, twelve miles. Um, y'all was doing cyclocross today. We were. Yeah, yes, we cyclocross. were. Before, yes. before we y'all were. did that little. It was cool definitely ride. a fun yeah. adventure. It was an adventure. Yeah. Wow. Was, that's yes. cyclocross. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what that Kudos is. Kudos to y'all for like doing the ride after the ride. <laughs> Word. Yeah. But Mike, Word. what um, OG Henry put you on to, to the whole bike? culture or at least to just bikes put yeah. you in the right direction but he how put, did you get from there the right to here direction. so henry I'll, I'll make this story quick because i drug it out my bad no no, 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 no i want to know i want to know this is a good story yeah. so henry told me he was like yo you got the wrong bike he's like if you don't get the right bike you're not going to want to ride which is true you know That's what i'm saying so he told me exactly what i needed to get he's like hey man you need to go get you a specialized cirrus that's a commuter bike Mm. And I was just like, all right, bet. So I left there. I rode home. I, I drove to the bike shop. Oh, immediately. He went right to yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, that day. I, drove I said, to I ain't doing shop. no more riding today. <laughs> yeah, I was done. I had to ride home. Yeah. On that heavy ass mountain bike from Walmart. Oh, that now was it's heavy. Small. You didn't know it was heavy before <laughs> I had no idea. my man said it. <laughs> now it's heavy. That's how they get you. That yeah. is how they get you. Yeah. So I go into the, I went into the local specialized store. They were looking at me. I was looking at them and I was like, I need a specialized Cirrus. And my man was just like, all right, it's right over here. So he took me over to the bike and I was like, tell me about the bike. He was like, well, it's it's a hybrid. So I said, okay, tell me about this hybrid. He was like, well, it's $1,100. And that was the end of the conversation. He trash. didn't give me any information. He didn't tell me trash. Super why trash. is it $1,100 or Super trash. you know what features it had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it, he couldn't tell me he couldn't justify the price tag for me. And also just kind of looked at me strange. And I was just like, oh, that's weird. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm somebody who's used to obviously buy a Walmart bike. So I took that experience. I went home. I drove to work the next day because I was angry <laughs> at that little bike. So I said, I told Henry what happened. He was just like, yo, that's just what happens when we go into bike shops. So wow, I was like, yo, that's wow. wow. You know wow. what I mean? Then he put me on, was just like, go on Craigslist. See if you can find something on there. So I did, I did, I ended up finding the same bike that was at the bike shop for half the price. Wow. So I saw it, he was like, that's the one right there. That's that specialized series, it's pearl white. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go grab that. I left work, went over to Jersey, grabbed the joint up. I took it to Henry's mechanic, which was a cool dude. And he did a tune up on it. If you buy a bike on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, take it to your local bike shop. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> yeah. Because then they'll tell you if it's clapped out. And don't get mad if it is clapped out. It's worth the investment. All right. Yeah. Yep. Tricycle. <laughs> I like the plug. Another Tricycle plug. Tricycle Cafe yeah. and Bike Shop. So I, I, I grabbed that bike and I rode it to work after uh, Henry's uh, mechanic was done with it. It's still it's tough as hell. <laughs> it's so, still heavy. Yeah, it was still it wasn't it wasn't as heavy in the head. Like it was just a flat bar road bike. But okay. I did I fit on the bike. I enjoyed I enjoyed riding it. And I took my girlfriend out on that same trail that she kicked my ass up. Wait, Paul. It, it went from date to girlfriend. Yeah, she was yo, <laughs> so I yeah, in the meantime. Yeah, okay, you put in work. That. June. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, like, work. We, we gonna be together because you like bikes and stuff too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, yeah, she liked me back, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I took that experience and I ended up buying. I'm competitive, right. also. So another uh, another side note. Uh, my stepfather had um, was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Okay. Um, American Cancer Society had taking care of them like they gave them gas money stuff like that for their visits That's and like up. would pay for my mother to like stay in philly when um when he had visits that's what's up and i was like mom just come to the crib she was just like nah bro like we're gonna come to your house before they give me a hotel so but long story short they 
um, they really took care of him. So I was like, yo, I want to do this ACS ride. So it was my first like <clears throat> big ride. And I think that's how a lot of people get into it. Okay. Yeah. So I had to train. I had the, the specialized series. I was like, all right, this is, this is what it is. But I was on the SRT and Cash is like whooping my ass going up the trail. And I was just like, yo, I've been riding this bike for like three months. I got to climb these four hills to get to work. And Cash is still like beating me. So I talked to Henry. <laughs> Henry always we gotta got to be advice. Yeah. Right. Y'all got me. I'm going to try to tell Henry to come through tomorrow. So Henry's like, hey, young blood, I'm sorry to tell you, but you got the wrong bike. Hmm. So After he just, like, yo, Henry, yo, yo this is so a I'm straight like, movie just right now. This bike, dog. Like, <laughs> right. what's up? He's like, you need you a road bike proper. So I was just like, oh, man. Like, sorry, though, to do. Henry put me on again. His man was actually selling a, um, a Bianchi Aria. Or no, not the Aria, the uh, uh, Via in the room. So his man was selling the joint, and he was just like, go grab that for my man. Yeah, that's official. Yeah, so I went and grabbed that joint. Yo, the first time I rode that bike, you couldn't tell me shit, yo. Right. I was just like, ah! It was like driving work. a truck, and then driving like sports a semi-sports car. Right, right. Right. So I had that joint. I did the ACS ride with it, did really well, and really kind of fell in love with the sport. So I trained <coughs> the rest of that summer, through the winter and just got strong and fast. Now, right. what year is this? This was two, oh, man, six years ago. So what are we in right now? 22, so 2016. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. 2016. Okay. So it might've been 2015. 2015 was on the date. Yeah. The Genesis. Yeah. The Genesis, the Genesis. Okay. Yeah. So I got the road bike. I decided in 20, I guess it was 2017, that I wanted to try to race. Again, man, Henry, yo, he's like, oh, you're going to need a race bike. <laughs> Yo, but this is the thing. Different. I'm telling my girl, like, this is the third bike. You know what I mean? So she's just like, oh, bro, like, you got that bike. Then you got that bike. Now you getting this bike? You're all like, in. Yo, you're all in, son. I'm trying to race. And then I showed her the shoes. And then I showed her the helmet. And then the kits. Yo, she was like, yo, you like eight stacks into some shit right now. And I was just like, <laughs> yep. yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so... This was the thing that, that happened that really drove me to um, open a bike shop. I went to another specialized dealer. I wanted to get the LA Sprint. Mm. Did the research. It was an affordable bike that I could race, and if I crashed it, I wouldn't care that much. Aluminum. Yeah, and it had the it had a, a more aggressive um, positioning yep. than my uh, than my Bianchi. So I was like, all right, this is the bike I need. Put the coins away, went and got it, or went to go get it. I walked into the joint and they did the same thing. Wow. So they're looking no at me. No info, like, no questions, just yo, I'm just like, I was standing there for a minute. I was like, yo, can I and it like literally people was walking by me. So I was just like, yo, this is wild. So I grabbed somebody, I was like, yo, I'm trying to get this bike. And he was just like, that's a three thousand dollar bike. And I don't think it was, I don't think it was three thousand at the time. I, I think it might have been like twenty five or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I still have a picture. It's crazy. I was looking at my phone the other day. I still got a picture on my phone of the price tag, like wow. when I was doing the research on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went. My man kind of just like brushed me off. It was like oh, it's like three thousand or twenty five hundred dollar bike, and I was just like, and kept it pushing. Oh, <laughs> like you're not gonna buy it. Let yeah. me tell you the price. You're not yeah. gonna buy it, Oprah. Yep. So I grabbed somebody else. They came out and I was just like, yo, like, I'm trying to get this bike, this and that. I want to race. And he was like, how long have you been riding? And I was like, like, a year and a half, two years. He was like, and you, you think you can race? Like, just kind of like real right. condescending. Roadblock. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, you know what? Keep your bike. I'm good. Went home. I tried to see what was comparable. I did a lot of research. Like, I, that's what I do. I like yeah, to research yeah. things. As you so, should. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Don't make uninformed purchases. Facts. I see people <laughs> all the time. I ride today. Somebody was on a bike. It's too small for them. I see people just go out and buy bikes that are too big for them. Get some information. Like, call your local bike shop. If your local bike shop doesn't have enough time to talk to you for 30 minutes. Spin off. Yeah, Don't even rock with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to another bike shop because that's what it's about. It's about a quality experience. Right. Anywhere you go, you should set up 30 minutes and be like, hey, listen, this is what I want to do. Can you do a quick measurement? I could look at somebody, for the most part, and tell you, like, what size bike you should be on. Yeah. My, my service manager will look at you and tell you exactly what size bike you'll be on. And then she'll pull out the measuring tape and measure your ass and be like... Get you straight. Yeah. Yep. All the way straight. You know what I mean? But always make informed decisions. I did my research. I saw the Bianchi Aria. So I was like, yo, that's the bike. I went to another local bike shop. Yo, and they blessed me. 
I went in there. I told him what I wanted. And my man was just like, wait, 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 wait. Don't tell me what you want. Tell me what you plan on doing with the bike. Right. That's the way to start. Yeah. That is a that's great the first question to, to ask. Yeah. And that's literally the first thing he said. Don't tell me what you want. Tell me what you're doing with the bike. So I was like, well, I want to race. Have you done training? I was like, yo, I've been training all, all winter. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm ready. He was like, yo, that's dope. Let me get you size real quick. So I got the measuring tape. Measure me. Measure my, my reach, all that stuff. He was like, all right, so if you're going to race this bike, this is a size bike you need, this and that. So I'm like, what bike should I get? And I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because I saw the bike on the wall. Y'all got to sit there like, right. the that's the bike? So he's like, you want to get the Aria? And I was like, yo, like, yeah, that's the one I wanted. Right. Yo, so now I'm hyped, Victory! right? Victory! I'm hyped. So he's just like, let me get you fit, this and that. Thing was, that joint was like probably a stack more than what right. I wanted to spend or what I had planned on spending. Right. Right. But the other thing that he did, and the, one of the things that we do here is he educated me. Right. He was like, all right, this is the difference between this bike and that bike. Mm -hmm. This joint got can't be group set. That one has a 105 group set. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and he told me the differences between the group sets, the weight of the group sets, mm -hmm. the whole nine. He was like, yo, this this frame is a little bit better because it's a, a um, carbon frame. Right. You know what I mean? And this is an aluminum frame. Don't crash this one, though. Because right. it's going to be right. real bad. You know right. what I mean? Yo, but what, what, what they feel, I want to cut you off really yeah. quick. What people fail to realize is if your budget is three grand, but the bike is two, based on how you're being sold, you may just go ahead and blow your budget. Yes. If if I blew it. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. It's like people yeah. like sales reps fail to understand that. Like if you just put in the time on one customer, you could potentially like get more out of that customer than what you put in front of them. Yes. And you and you keep yes. one, keep that customer for, for some yeah. time. Like okay. I know some you know what I mean? Like you would go back to them. If and you you're going to refer or, people. Yeah, you're going to refer yeah. people. I send people. I still, like, that bike shop is right across the river. Cycles by Kyle. If you want, like, a Pinarello or a Bianchi, I send everybody. Yeah. There. Cycles yeah. by Kyle. Yeah. No doubt. And those are no my doubt. folk. You know what I'm saying? We we rock with each other. That's what like, it is. Hands down. That's if they that. need, they send people over here. They'd be like, ah, we don't sell specialized, but Mike does over at Tricycle. You know what I mean? But it was that experience that kind of formed what, I was like, oh, I want to be treated like this everywhere I go. Right. So I dropped the extra stack on it. I bought a pair of shoes. I bought their kit. I bought a helmet. My man was just like, yo, just, and, and my race was the week after I bought the bike. So my man was like, don't race this bike. So I was just like, oh, all right. I took that joint out on the trail, yo. I was just like, yo, I'm racing this bike. <laughs> so when it gets another, the another little You're side like, this has the go-go juice. Go. It was I took gone. both bikes to the race. Wow. So it was my first race. I took both bikes. I see these cats pulling out these little little smashers. So I was just like. I'm pulling out my whip too. Pulling my drone out. Yo. Yeah. Got up on that line. Started hitting. I made it three laps. And then an attack went off the front. These cats was like, cover. Yo, the whole peloton just took off. So I was like, oh, I got to go. I put power down on that drone. Like the difference between like a touring bike and a race bike. Flex, right, yeah. right. So I'm pushing, I'm putting power down. Usually with the red bike, it'll flex and then respond. Mm -hmm. Yo, that joint almost threw me off the bike. Right away, you got to it. Right away. <laughs> I, I never, and, and that was, it was crazy because you don't know the difference until you know the difference. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You get on two different bikes and it's just like all bikes are the same. Nah. Oh, that little joint was like a Ferrari, yo. No doubt. So no doubt. that was my experience. The thing, even with that shop, was I didn't see any representation inside the shop, even though they treated me great. Every shop that I've been to, I've never seen people of color. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm us. Yeah. yeah, us. Never yeah. seen it. So I was just like, man, like, yeah, they treated me good, but where are the people that look like me? Right. No bike shops that I see it. You know what I mean? Not even in the advertisement. These, these, um, the manufacturers. Yeah. They don't use black men, black <clears throat> women. Hispanic men, Hispanic women, LGBTQ folk, you know what I'm saying? None of those people are in it are in any of their marketing materials. Maybe now Yeah, after like the noise DC, been made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, and them, like right. came out Bahati, you know, after all of those things happened, now people are like, oh, oh. <laughs> and then they get it, you know what I'm saying? And then they see that we got a little bit of coin to spend and, and things are different. 
Well, know, we have a lot of coin to spend. Right. We're the largest spenders in the United States. We are. Absolutely. Just a matter of what we're exposed to. No matter what it is, though, we spend. Like, even the ride today, there were, like, maybe 40 riders. I mean, you know, there were bikes. smashing bikes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, some bikes outside. Yeah, was, there were some bikes like outside. like a little candy shop. Yeah. Like, real talk. And yeah. that's not even everybody. Wait, so, just like, so let me run this back. Mm-hmm. So this all really started with a date. I mean, yeah. if we want to keep it 100. That's, you still, that's what I, it sounds like I, to me. Are you still with the the, the woman? Oh, they're mad. So basically, your wife is the reason why does she know you this? are here today. She does, yo. But because I, I she don't... almost dropped you. <laughs> does she tell that story? Legitimately, why you're here does today? She tell it? Yeah. Does she tell the story of you? No, she listened to me tell talk about Henry once, right? And she was like, "Yo, but you left out the part where <laughs> you took me on that date, right?" She like, "Hold on, Ken, yo, this ain't about Henry. You spend too much time yeah. with Henry. This is about me, yeah, yo. Yeah, and that's really what this is. That is so dope yeah, that yeah. because your wife dropped you on a bike ride, bike riding date, tricycle exists. Tricycle exists, and then that led to your poor service." Experience customer service experiences Absolutely. in various shops, and then you had your OG who was just hitting you like a black exploitation flim. Yes, Bennett, dun, 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 <laughs> Bennett, right? His theme every, music, time, every time, you walk right? In. Every time you walk in, nah, young blood, you need this. I just Snapshot picture in. like Roger right. Zap, you know, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, bro, yeah. that's a that's a dope backstory, yeah. man. It was it was wild, man. And it, it, had it not been for honestly, had it not been for her, had it not been for Henry. Like, I wouldn't be into cycling the way that I am. That's so you know dope. What I'm saying? That is dope, Also, man. like, shout out to my stepdad for surviving cancer. Word, and, yeah. word. Because you know that ACS ride was your first ride. Right. And that motivated you to want to do well. Yeah, absolutely. And shout out to the riders that were banging you up across the head <laughs> on the trail, right? Yeah, yo, they were hurting me. Right. This one dude, I remember he was, a, I'll never forget, he had a Jameis. And I was just like, I, I remember looking at the, uh, the chain stay. Or not the chain stay, the um seat stay. Seat stay. stay, yeah. And I was just sitting there like, Jameis, whooping my ass, man. And my man like just slowly, you you know how it feels to yes. get dropped. Like cats just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. And I was just couldn't read like, that no more. I can't read got me. James. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was the whole reason that I, um the reason that I started the shop was to have a hub, a community hub. Right. To have a place where people could come and feel comfortable. If y'all notice, like this, this is an old house. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So it was built in 1770. This side that we're in was built in 1770. The side the cafe is in was built in 1820. Let so, me pause you for a second. Take a step back. Tell us about all the services you offer. What are all the components of the shop? Oh, man. So we are the first black owned full service bike shop in the Philadelphia area. Wow. So Christian. applause, Word of applause, that's so fire. applause. That's fire. If yeah. I had the button, yeah. and when you say full service, <laughs> you, you, you're talking like if somebody needs to come and get their bike worked on everything. Everything. So yeah. we do sales, service, retail, and we got a dope cafe. A you do bike fittings. We do like do bike, bike fittings as well. And you guys hear that? Only, bike fittings. The only black restaurant in our town. This is true too. Yeah. That's wow. what's up. Off yeah. cam. That's his partner. Isaiah. 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 What's up? What's up? In. He's one of the wheels to the uh to the tricycle. To the tricycle. The other That's one is my wife. Who, is who started it all? Because she's, she's, her a, she's a co-owner hang. regardless. Her yeah. picture needs to hang on this mantle. And you he's gotta put her like the put her up there. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. her up there. Be like, yo, who is that lady? That's why you're here today. Wow. Yes. Yes. What is what what is one of the one eye opening things about owning a bike shop that you notice like right away? As far as like you're just like wow i didn't even understand this piece of the business everything everything so i come from an automotive background right okay. so i started out like basically ground level started out as a wrench and then worked my way up to being like a, a area manager for sales and service right for the northeast and what i ended up doing with the bike shop was modeling that behind an automotive kind of model I think that like when I when I went to get into this, I was looking for uh, consultants because again, you need to make informed decisions. Right. And the consultant that I found for the bike shop, the first consultant that I found was like, you need to buy three hundred thousand dollars worth of bike inventory. Wow. Worth of bikes. inventory. You need three hundred thousand dollars worth inventory. of bikes to sell. I mean, if you get Pinarellos, that's like ten. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or expensive <laughs> bikes expensive that we will not mention. Bikes, right. 
But you also have to have the market because, like, right. the brands that we sell have like thirteen thousand dollar bikes, ten thousand yeah, dollar right. bikes. Facts. But how many of those are you selling? Right. Right. We sell quite a few. Nice. Not gonna lie, like everyone that comes in goes out, but it's people again that like majority of the sales are people that look like us. It's by people that I ride with or the people that they know. You know what I mean? They, they travel here to buy the bikes. Yeah, we're the mouth that's and like all one of the dopest yeah. things. Um, I think one of the most eye opening things though was to see like how sideways the industry is mm. and how it kind of shoots itself in the foot. What do you mean by that? Describe what you mean by sideways. So I'll say the one thing, like they used to base all of their projections off of, or all their models off of bike sales, which is nuts. That's crazy. If you go to any car dealership, car dealerships make their money on service. Mm -hmm. So you get somebody to come in, they might buy a car, right? But you retain that person through your service department. Mm -hmm. You keep getting that car serviced over right. and over and over and over again. Until you buy a new one, then you repeat, rinse and repeat. Thing. Yeah, and returns, you returns, that that's you all. Like have brand loyalty. Yep. If I'm a Ford guy, I'm going to just keep going back to the Ford dealership. Right. I'm, I love Audis. I faithfully take my car to the Audi dealership. I don't know more because I found this like clutch dude <laughs> that has his garage and he specializes in Audi. Sorry, Audi. Yeah. So I take my car. I do. He's I take my cars on. to him though. But it's the same thing though. Like he doesn't make his money off of sales. He makes his money off of service. Right. right. Every brand, like every company has that sort of model. Like bike shops should have a service based model. And that's kind of how we kick it. I was like, yo, I'm gonna just build a very dope, very efficient service. Like that's, that's, and that's what we did. And we came into this during COVID. So there weren't any bikes. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, right, right. Bikes. So right. that's dope. So bro. that's number one, where they shot themselves in the foot. Number two, they kind of shoot themselves in the foot with how they treat their staff or, or people that work on the things. So we don't, we don't like undercut. So if you go to a bike shop, you ask a mechanic, Yo, how much you getting paid? An experienced mechanic, somebody with 10, 15 years of experience is making 17, 18 dollars an hour. Wow. That's an adult. Yeah, <laughs> you can't feed you. He's like, that's You're an grown, adult. Son. Yeah. They're grown. How, how grown you paying bills at 18 dollars an hour? Right. right. You know what I'm right. saying? So we were like, it came in and again, it's kind of crazy because you don't see these numbers. You don't see high salaries being paid mm. to service managers and bike shops. Right. But I was like, yo, I'm, I'm Paying my service manager at least 10K above what any other shop is paying. Right. Period. Right. And now my service manager has a good life. The other thing is bike shops are making their mechanics work on the weekends. Like your experienced mechanics. Why does my full service mechanic or my uh, experienced mechanic need to work on the weekends? It should be all. Right. My service manager likes to race. So I'm going to be like, nah, you can't race. You're going to be in the shop. $17 yeah, right. an hour. He's working right. during the week and on weekends. That's more than 40 hours. Yeah, they give them off on Sundays and Mondays. But in this time, like peak time, yeah, you're working like 50, 60 hours a week. Wow. Easily. You know what I mean? Wow. But you're getting paid a lower wage. People treat you like shit. And then on top of that, like you can't do the things that you really love. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, yo, we're going to turn that on his head too. <clears throat> And give like the head mechanics off on the weekends. Saturday, Sunday is yours. Monday, you don't even have to come into work. Work from home. Dope. You know That's I mean? dope. Do all the research and find the bike parts, all that stuff. That's dope. Come in Tuesday through Friday. That's so basically, like the same way you were talking before, like when we when we touch down on on some section of some industry, like us brothers, we bring the flavor to it. So you tried to bring that same thing to service in the shop as well. Absolutely. So that's our culture. That's it. That's yeah. embedded in that, of course. And that's brothers and sisters. Yeah. Answers. Yes. Definitely. Both. 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 Uh, <laughs> both. both of them. So before we we wrap, I have to ask: if you could ride anywhere in the world, mm. where would it be and why? Man, I would probably ride. Mm. This is good. That's a good question. Good. <laughs> you said New Jersey? Yeah. <laughs> Come on over the bridge. Come on I did, over. I, I just did a dope ride, though, over uh, over the winter. I went to Puerto Rico. I rode in Puerto Rico. I went to Arizona. I rode there. I love Arizona riding, must have uh, been crazy, though. Yo. So here's what we'll do. Audience, please hit the comments. Hit us on IG. Let us know where Mike should go for his dream bike ride. Yeah. Can we go out the country, Mike? We can go out the country, but this is one thing. Mike, they about to have you on a mountain somewhere, boy. You, you boy, <laughs> Florida, is might not want to agree to that. Oh, Mayorka, you know, here I he comes, go. Senegal. Nice. Oh, yeah, fire, one of the guys fire, on my fire. race team, um, Sore Foundation Racing. 
Hit us up, yo. I, I do follow Sore Foundation. Yo, we're doing Fire. a lot of dope things, man. Yeah, yes. nice. a lot of nice. dope So things. Senegal. I do. Right now, Senegal. Yeah, one yo. A is Senegal. Audience, Hassan, let us know one B. Yes. With the Senegal, he was just like, Hassan's strong. And he was like, yo, they beat my pants off over there. <laughs> he was like, you got to go out there and ride. But yeah, I want to ride. I'd like to go to different countries in Africa to ride. Yeah. And I was talking to, there's, a, um, there's an older gentleman that comes by the shop all the time. And um, he was saying, like, you know, all these tours. Oh, and, you know, uh, Dr. Moncrief. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Marlin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he was saying the same thing, but even before uh, Paul Wingfield said it. So he was just like, yo, why can't we have like the tour tour the synagogue? You know right. What I'm saying? right. Why can't we do these things in countries with people that look like us? Just because the fanfare is not there, right? Right. The prestige isn't there. The the rides are just as it's tough. the same. That's what I'm saying. It's not like right. France has the best roads in the world. Nah, right. Not at all. Right. And there's beautiful scenery in probably most of the countries in Africa. Beautiful scenery. Yes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, that's where I would go and I would bring attention to that. Wait, I want to back up. Soar Foundation. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. So it was wild. Soar Foundation came about because we were supposed to do a uh, race team out of Tricycle. What ended up happening was we got absolutely devastated by Hurricane Ida. So a lot of the monies that we had, like where we're sitting now is supposed to be a showroom for our bikes. But we had to put that money into rebuilding the cafe. So we got hit two months after we opened. Wow. We had a decision to make. It was just like, yo, do we fold or do we just take the money that we got and rebuild? So we put a, um, put a message out on IG. I remember like after the water subsided, like that's right, right? Subsided? Right. Subsided. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we knew, we knew, we knew. 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 We knew, I speak better, <laughs> but after the, after the water subsided, it was just like muck. It was just like yeah. a lot of mud. So I, I just went that pressure washer everybody was using to get their bikes clean. I took that joint and I was just like spraying real sadly. Like it was a, like a movie, right? Like what's the sad song? Um, heartbreak anniversary. <laughs> so imagine that I'm just in there like, like trying to get the mud out so that we could stick, take everything out of the shop and put it out there and clean up. So we put a, a message out, we was like, yo, if you're in a community, in an area and you can lend a hand, like just come out and help us out. We got right. a lot of cleanup to do. Like 75 people came out. Wow. So. In total, not all at once, because nah, as y'all see, it's it crowded. Yeah. But yo, over the course of a day, 75 people came out. I sent, it, we, we were supposed to be going down to uh, One Love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Iron Mike and um, Al took my truck. I was just like, I think it should be fine. Y'all go ahead, go down. I'm going to fly down after I go check the shop out. Everybody from my community was in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So TCR, all my folks from TCR, all my folks from KRT, like Major Taylor, everybody was down there. So I was just like, dang, yo, this is wild. Like, I'm here by myself cleaning. 75 people in total showed up. And that just showed me that the community that we were in appreciated this. So that following, that was Friday, Sunday, we put up a, uh, we put, we had put up a GoFundMe and then we just, we were like, yo, let's just have a little cookout, like old school. So <laughs> yeah, the fish fried. I like uh, this. But... My wife and I also own Black Girl on Tap, which okay. is a mobile beer bar at Black Girl on Tap. Sorry, this is like a commercial. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna have to pay y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the invoice. You're supposed, you're supposed, you're supposed, you're supposed to shout them out. This is the we channel. Bought the, um, we bought the beer trailer out here. Our, our homie Laura from Attic uh, Attic Brew out in um out in a uh, brewery town or not brewery town out in um Germantown. Yep. Bought a bunch of her beer out and we lit up the grill and started cooking. I had a That's party. Up, we had a party. Yeah. That's what's That's up. So many people came out and just was like donating, donating, donating. Like yo, tell me how I can help. This place is so important. And I tell people all the time, like a lot of times it takes years. To, to see something like that come to fruition. Mm. And a lot of times, we're not the ones to see it come to fruition. Our, our children are, right. or right. their children, you know right. what I'm saying? You put so much work into something, and you don't get to see it, but it still makes a difference. Right. So it showed me, like in that moment, it showed me at the cookout, everybody was here. So it was black cyclists here, white cyclists here, 
um, LGBTQ, LGBTQ cyclists here, people from the Conshohocken community, everybody from all walks of life was in one spot. To help you rebuild. Uh, Bro. And you amazing. didn't even even have all your people here. It was no. down in Atlanta. Yep. Yep. That's beautiful. So yeah. that definitely had to signal that you were doing something right. Yeah. If you of ever course. doubted in your of mind, course. that had to signal to Two you. Two months in. Yeah. yeah. Two months like in. Like when Moses was on the mountain. Right. Yeah. The light is coming down. <laughs> Yo. Mike, you're in the right space. Yo. And it was, it was, it was really the sign that, you know, the things that we're doing here are making a difference in communities, you know what I'm saying? In our community, in the cycling community, um, we were making a difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The experience that people have, that same experience that I had when I went to Cycles by Kyle, if you come here and you don't have that experience, shame on me and my staff. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And shame on me for hiring somebody that doesn't give you that same experience. I'm sure y'all saw Ellie down there. Yeah. One of the most pleasant people, very yes, helpful. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean? Everybody that we rock with does the same thing. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, I mean, it's, it's proof out here. There's people, people still hanging out. We can hear them all. Yeah, yeah, There's people yeah, outside right now. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. But like, I say that to say, like, we, we made a difference. We made an absolute real difference. And this is all from a dream that I had because I wasn't treated right. And right. your wife dropped you. Let's not leave that out. <laughs> yeah, wife, your yeah, wife yeah. dropped you. Nobody Mike's wife. I, I got yeah. your back, Mike's wife. <laughs> I got your back. Yes. Yes. Should have been out here on that right, e-bike, like, right. I see y'all when I see you. So dope story, Mike. For real, dope story, Thank man. Yeah. I appreciate. It. I appreciate y'all for letting me tell it. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, man. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you. And coming Thank on the pod and just <laughs> chopping it up <laughs> with us, drop. man. Yeah, like, yeah. I've been wanting dope. to come for a minute ever since you opened. Yeah. I've been wanting to come and try the coffee. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a coffee snob, so word challenge. Mike, why Dom is here? Hey, if it ain't. He knew on. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. that's all. I'm a little less. bit of a coffee stop, Mike. So, you know, like sometimes when you like, like the Bulls back in the 90s and they was just like winning chip after chip after chip after chip. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm how you feel about it. Bro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, wanna, I wanna usher you downstairs and be like, Dom, do it. Yes. Dom, do Give it. Give him the business, yo. Yep. That's what's up. Dominic Duran Barista is our lead barista. I'm going to keep y'all posted. Yeah, we're going to have to list all these shout outs, man. We're going, I mean, the graphics yes, going to show so all these spots, no doubt, man. No so right. many of them. Yeah. Well, Mike, Thanks, thank Mike. You. Appreciate yeah. you coming Appreciate out, brother. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, thank man. You, Mike. Definitely so. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, You're inspiring. Story, man. Definitely, thank man. You. Definitely. Thank you. Yes. That was a good. You see that shape? And we out. Yeah, yeah, yo, that's that's, that's why we call it Optimus, bro. We call that man Optimus. Optimus Prime. I appreciate y'all, man.